going on everybody? We're back with my N64 programming primer series and this is part three of us covering the LibUltra SDK lights demo. So let's just dive into the code. Here we go. From there we create and start the Armand thread which is used for debugging as I mentioned earlier. And that will trigger this function here for debugging purposes to be running in the background. After that has been started, uh, we go and create and start the game thread, which is the main thread. And that will trigger our main proc function, which is the next function in our code. And the last step is for us to reassign the idle thread priority level. And we do that here by running this OS set thread pry command uh, with a priority level of zero with this parameter here, as you can see. And the reason we do that is because we had initially created this thread with a high priority of 10. And so we want to make sure that we reassign that with the lowest priority before we exit the idle thread. Uh, from there, that triggers the uh, main proc, as you can see here, when we created the main game thread. So once the main proc function is called and we initialize some data, we declare uh, some of the message queues that we're going to be using as part of our threads in our game. And we have some functions here that we call to just verify that certain uh, thread messages have been received. Uh, from there, you'll notice this while loop. All of this code, all the way down to its closing bracket, which is way down at the bottom of the main proc function, which is just here. This is the closing bracket for the main proc itself. And this closing bracket here is for the while loop. So now when all this code gets executed and it reaches the very bottom, it's gonna jump all the way back to the beginning of this while loop and repeat, right? It's gonna just keep doing that. And that is essentially, every time it does that loop, that is rendering one frame of our game. So, yeah, you know, it's going to be doing that 30 times a second or, you know, based on the frame rate that you're that you're you have your system up and running at. And so that's where we're going to be going. We check controllers, we initialize some data, we uh, set up registers on the N64, which are, um, you know, it's commands that we send to the N64 hardware to make sure that they're set up in a certain state, whether it's erasing some uh, memory uh, which is buffers, we can go in and, and initialize everything and make sure that it's in the state that it needs to be. So now as we move further down, we come to these GSP matrix commands. So a lot of you that were just starting out were getting confused by these. Uh, it's a big clump of code there, but what you have to realize is that these arguments have just been carried down. So these are all part of the one GSP matrix function. And as well, the, all of these variable names that have been combined here, um, this is like a logic function that's being uh, uh, executed here. So one way to look at it is to think of them as like a little checkbox for a certain condition to be met uh, of the hardware. And so if you have different uh, variable names present and all of them have this little logic or uh, a bitwise or function um, implemented in between them, uh, what they do is they combine all of these um, values together. So it's essentially acting like a little switch to make sure that the hardware is set up to meet the condition of what it is that you want that you have declared here. So that's one way of looking at it. And uh, I know a lot of you that were first starting out were having trouble uh, figuring out how that worked. So again, I just wanted to talk about that. Um, and uh, so essentially we're going in there and making sure that the hardware is set up the way we want uh, for drawing the graphics on our screen. And we run through and call the different functions to draw the floor, the shadow, the teapot. So as we move down, we have this block of code here. Uh, that's from line 420 all the way down to 443. So now what this block of code does is it, it determines which version of microcode we use to process our game. So you might be asking yourself, Jerry, what is microcode? Um, so microcode is, it's a good way of looking at it is sort of like firmware or uh, like a BIOS on a computer motherboard. It's, it's sort of like the, the first software that gets put on to the N64 and is used to interpret all the different commands that you have in your source code. 
and the microcode files are created by Nintendo. And in the beginning, when the Nintendo 64 first came out, uh, it was very guarded and it, it was not, you were not able to go in and manipulate it or change it, even as a developer uh, in the gaming uh, industry. But as time went on, different companies started to create their own versions of microcode and it allowed them to have, you know, very specialized functions and control over the hardware compared to other gaming studios. So that's what microcode is. So as you read up on them, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of different, different types of microcode. Some of them are optimized for doing uh, 2D uh, graphics as opposed to 3D graphics. Anyway, so that's what this block of code is doing. So now as we move further down, you're gonna notice a lot of these OS receive message functions being called. And so what's happening here is that the system is going in and checking the messages that have been sent from all the different threads that have been created. And they're going in to validate, to check, to make sure that the thread and the processing of the graphics or audio has been completed. And depending on the priority levels of the threads that have been assigned, uh, it will jump back and forth between each and then make sure that all the data that's required for the graphics and audio uh, to be uh, displayed for that frame are, are completed when they need to be. So that's what those functions are for. And one of the last things that we do here uh, as part of the uh, rendering of one frame in this while loop is to swap the draw buffer. So now you're, you might be asking yourself what's going on here. Well, if you think about it, if you're in the middle of manipulating some of the graphics while it's being drawn, you don't want to see that. You don't want to have that displayed on your television monitor uh, because it would look all kind of weird and glitchy. There would be colors missing or certain parts of the three-dimensional graphic would be, would be missing. So what they do is they have two uh, different uh, areas of memory that are used for rendering the graphics. And only one of those areas of memory is sent to your monitor for viewing. So while one is being shown on your television, you have another area of memory that's completely isolated and you get to go in there and manipulate it. And then once it's done and rendered, you can forward that area of memory to the screen. And then the other one gets sent back and you go in and manipulate the other. And so this constant swapping of these areas of memory, which they call a buffer or the draw buffer, is just a way to prevent any kind of glitching happening while the data is being manipulated and they call that double buffering. So that's what's happening here. And so this logic function that we're performing here is just swapping between those two areas of memory, forwards that information to uh, the frame buffer and what is being shown on your television screen. And then from there, we can increment this theta variable. You could comment this out and not have it uh, execute here in the loop of our function, but you could insert this statement within the conditional statements of our game controller. So for instance, if you were to press the A button, you would have it so that the this value would be incremented by one. And then where you press another button, say so the button B, you could change it so that it decrements and it subtracts a value from it. And so by that way, you are able to control uh, the rotation uh, back and forth between uh, a model that's being rendered and displayed on screen. And so that's the last part of our, uh, our while loop in the main procedure function of our game. So, and then again, that's just getting constantly cycled through over and over and over again uh, for every frame. So now all of these functions underneath are simply functions that are getting called from within the game loop. So uh, like as an example, you have the draw teapot function you have the draw shadow function and the draw floor function. These are all getting called from within the main loop. So all of these functions get executed as part of that setup to draw that graphic. And again, as you can see, we have some of these conditional defines which uh, allow us to set up uh, the hardware in different ways based on whether or not you declare uh, use highlight at some point in the first parts of the game code. So that's pretty much it guys. It's uh, pretty straightforward for that. I want to go over and talk about these two files here, but I think we're gonna save that for the next video uh, just because this was getting a little bit lengthy. 
so that wraps up today's video. We managed to get through the entire C source code file, so that's awesome. And the next video in the series that I'll be posting, we'll be diving into and looking at some of the other supplemental files that we find in these demo folders, and I'll talk a bit about those. So that's uh, that concludes today's video, guys. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you guys can. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Ciao.